Right. Uh, how are you all feeling, guys? Good. Pretty full up and tired, I'm guessing, as well. Um, we could either stop now, play out for a drink, and uh, a rest, or we we'll just go and wind down for another half hour or 25 minutes on one quick topic, and then leave it at that. What do you yeah. guys want to do? Yeah. Two open stops and then more. We'll be messy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Does everyone know what SEO is? Searching. Has everyone heard of SEO? Not really. I don't know what it means. I know what it stands for, but I don't really understand what it means. Right. Um, I don't know whether I should talk about that or not, really. If it's, uh, who knows what SEO is? Search engine optimization. I've heard of the term. But What we'll do is something more useful instead then. And we'll talk about avatars. This is something we alluded to, I alluded to earlier. All right. Now. So we're going to do that another time, are we? We'll, we'll maybe just leave SEO. Um, or we, I can talk about it another time. But I want to talk about something that's, get, that's useful and certainly avatars. Uh, and the avatar is vitally important for you. Now. An avatar is kind of a homunculus, yeah? It's a model, a description of your ideal patient. All right, that's basically what it is. And you need an avatar because it serves as a template of your ideal person so you can find them. If you, don't, if you can't describe what your ideal patient is like, you can't track them down, you can't find them, all right? So, Obviously, your, pa your ideal patient needs to have a certain amount of income so they can afford your care and all the rest of it and see you privately. They may, you may want them to have private insurance or the, or, or the wherewithal to pay for um, seeing you. But once, but once you can define and describe your avatar, it allows you to, to find them and hunt them down and so you can present yourself to them in the advertising. Okay? It also means that you know what their needs are. So to give you an example, a concrete example, so talk, talk about, say, um, weight loss again. Now, um, a young bloke who's overweight who wants to lose weight, his needs and how you would talk to him through your marketing and your website or whatever are going to be different to a middle-aged divorcee who is suddenly, you know, she's divorced her husband who's horrible to him and she wants to lose the weight so she can get back on the dating scene and get out there, look good and feel good and all the rest of it. You can see how you'd speak to them in quite different ways. Yeah? Same is true in terms of health care. So a young bloke with pain in the groin, which may or may not be a hernia, you're going to need to address their needs and how you talk to them in your copy and con content differently to an older man who's got a long-standing incarcerated inguinal hernia who's put off being seen for years and years and years and he's only come in to see you now because he's been bullied to by his family and he's going to wear baggy trousers with enormous bulge in his trousers because this hernia, yeah? So their needs are different and the way to approach them and the way to present your skills and expertise is quite different, okay? So that's basically why you need to have that and it will inform many other things. Now, what information do you want? You want as much information as you possibly can get. It starts obviously with the gender and an age range. And if you can give them a name, which may well be based upon a past patient you've treated, that is sort of a typical patient, that's a really good idea. So, gender, age range, occupation, what kind of income are they earning? Are they affluent? Um, are they manuals or a school job? Housewife maybe? Or are they students? Identify them in as much detail as you can. Are they married? Are they single? Are they divorced? Are they happy? Are they sporty? What are their goals and desires? And this is based upon experience. So for example, your experience in terms of people who need trauma. You can identify a lot of that and also upon hard data. So you will know, and this works particularly well on orthopedics, because the data you know, that you collect 
But this is also true in other specialties as well. Because now, you, once you can act accurately identify and describe somebody, now you know how you can reach out to them. So, for example, uh, on Facebook, you can tailor your adverts to be seen by particular, very tightly controlled demographics, as we described with knee trauma. So age range, gender, what sports they're interested in, this, that, and the other. And the more accurately you can identify and describe that person, you can plug that data into Facebook so that that group of people sees your adverts. Mm -hmm. And that means that your spend, the amount of money you spend on getting that ad up, decreases. And it means that because only the people who are genuinely going to be interested in what you do and your skills and expertise are going to see that advert, and they're going to be much more likely to respond to you. When they do respond, they respond by clicking on an advert, and the content on that advert is tailored to that person. So, um, the sporty person's concerns are going to be what? Getting back to playing sports again, aren't they? They're going to be about getting rid of the pain. They're going to be about having a diagnosis. They're worried that they may have an ACL. Often, because they often have read up about this sort of stuff and they may have an ACL injury and so it goes. But the key thing is, are they going to get back to their sports? Is she going to get back on skis and have a ski again? So in your advert, you'll be talking about precisely those things. You're not talking about issues around knee replacement because you know that's, that's not who you are trying to appeal to. Your advert about knee replacement will, appear, will be aimed at an entirely different demographic. So the older person who's had long-standing knee pain, they may have deformity, they may have effusions, they may have stiffness, difficulty getting out of chairs, all the stuff, yeah? And the same is true in all your specialties as well. And your advert to that person, first of all, is aimed at a different demographic. Your advert will talk about different things. It will talk about deformity, pain, getting out of chairs, all that sort of stuff. And the page that you will send that patient to on your website will talk about different things. Now, again, you're not trying to make a diagnosis here. You're trying to send the right, you're trying to speak to the right people in the way they understand and the way they expect, the way that gels to them. Yeah? You're not going to talk to a young person about knee replacement surgery. Yeah. Not, yeah? And so it goes. And that means they're much more likely to respond by clicking on your advert. And when they come to your website um, and your web page, they are much more likely to do what you want them to do. And for most of it, it's going to be picking up the phone. So you're going to get that response, and they're going to come into your clinic. You see how it works, like a chain. And I always, um, particularly with Google AdWords, I like to think of it and describe it as like an old set of, old fashioned set of Christmas tree lights. The reason being that unlike the new LED lights, which we all love, the old fashioned lights, if one bulb blows, the whole thing goes pop and doesn't work. And you've got to faff around and try and work out where the error is, yeah? The same thing is true in your marketing. Because if you get one bit wrong, then the whole thing falls over. So if you have an advert that's targeted at young people, for the sake of discussion, knee trauma, then they come to your page, but you start talking about general knee pain or something else, or you send it to the home page of your website, you make a mistake. Yeah. The whole thing falls down. They don't respond. You've got all that bit right, all the steps, except you've blown it at this bit. And so that's why you, that's why you need an avatar, so you can accurately describe who you're looking for. I presume you can have an avatar for each of your, you know, you talk about conditions. <coughs> yeah. Right. Buttons. Absolutely. You can, have, you can have more than one avatar. Mm -hmm. So for knee pain, for example, the avatar for a young knee pain, I mean a different diagnosis, you're talking about you know, uh, an arthroscopy, you're talking about something that's relatively easily fixed, usually, etc., etc probably traumatic, blah, blah, blah. There's going to be a few people with you know, stills, disease, and whatever. But the point is, you're, you're putting them in towards one description. Somebody with older knee pain, the differential diagnosis and, and likely management, 
and concerns of the patient are different. So you can easily have more than one avatar for the same condition. But you've got to have it right so that you can speak to them in a way that charms them. Yeah? So. You mean just in terms of the advert, getting them to go to your website? Because there's. Everything. Not going to be that much on your website, but then you want them to get an appointment. Yeah, exactly. But again, if you, if you start talking about. You know, you've got somebody with knee trauma, potentially, a young bloke, they've ended up on your website and you start talking about knee replacements, mm. they're not going to pick up the phone. Is that where it's hidden pages? Yes, a landing, a landing page. page. Now, it, a landing page can be an ordinary page on your website, but it can be a hidden page. So don't worry too much about the hidden or otherwise, but the point is you send them to an appropriate page for them. So, um, in your in our example for you, the the somebody with a young person with shortness of breath needs to be seen and investigated. That could be a respiratory problem, it could be a cardiac problem. But the key is you can't make that diagnosis in, online or on the phone or anything. You've just got to get them in and see them. And what you'll be talking about to a young person with shortness of breath or palpitations will be different to what you'll be talking about to an older person. The diagnosis may be the same, may be totally different. But the key thing is you want to get them in, but the concerns of the patient will be different. So a young person is not going to be thinking, oh, I'm going to have a heart attack. But a young per an older person might well be. So and if you've got an advert targeting older people with chest pain or shortness of breath, you should address that you know, this could be a heart problem, and it might mean you've had a heart attack or heart failure or something. But don't worry, we'll get you, we'll, let me see you and sort you out. And most of the time it can be fixed up and put your mind at rest very quickly. But for a younger person, you wouldn't say that. It's not even crossed their mind to find that heart attack. You know it's possible. You'll say, usually this is nothing to worry about. But again, we need to see. Yeah. But you don't talk about heart attack. Mind, you don't talk about pacemakers. Yeah. You don't talk about any of that yeah. other stuff. You see what I mean? It's, yeah. it's slightly subtle with that example. Mm. But it's about speaking to people in a way they are expecting that's congruent with their expectations. OK? Um, is there anything else I should really talk about that's not that gay? So these avatars are used in Facebook advertising? They're used everywhere. Right. You've got to, in short, it, it sounds fancier than it is, in short, you've got to be able to accurately, accurately as possible, describe your ideal patient with a given condition. So in your case, it might be um, you wanted to sell, you want the, the service you want to provide is high end intraocular lens replacement. That costs money. So who's got money? So you describe the person, the symptoms and all the rest. Now who's that that person's got to be affluent because they're not going to get that from their private health company. Right. So now you're going to be affluent. So where am I going to find affluent people? Who are these guys are going to notice that have problems with the vision? So people who have high end expensive hobbies, such as golfing, such as classic cars, such as yachting, they go on fancy holidays. They may have a second home. Right. So now these are the sorts of people we're talking about because you want to cover the affluence bit. You can, you've got the age range bit. So now you can reach those people on Facebook, but there are other places you can reach them as well. Facebook would be a fun place to go because it's so cheap and you can just test it very quickly. But you could also run an advert in your local free paper. You could get interviewed as the golfing eye surgeon. Yeah? Because you're a golfer. And you've noticed, and blah, 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 etc. You set yourself up as the golfing eye surgeon. Mm -hmm. Your expertise is dealing with golfers whose handicap is falling through no fault of their own it's because their eyes are going off. Do you see how that builds up in that personality? And also in authority, because now you are calling yourself the golfing eye surgeon. So you're a golfer, and you want to do well, and blah, blah, and you find you're struggling. Who are you going to see? You can see any old eye surgeon, or you can see the golfing eye surgeon. Yeah, difficult. Do you see how it works? And you can set up multiple personalities, not personalities, but sort of niches and different websites and so on. So you've got a website called Golfing Eye Surgeon, say, and that's all you talk about. But you've got another website which talks about helping people with cataracts and so on. And you send the traffic which you're getting from the yachting magazine, for example, or from the advert to do with being the golfing, golfing difficulties, whatever, or the ads you put up around golf clubs to the golfing website. Well, that's all you talk about. Now, there's no difference between them. 
lens replacement for a golf or anybody else. But that's not the point. The point is you positioned yourself as the expert in sorting this out. For golfers who are serious about their golf, who are struggling with their handicap, and they found out they've got this problem. Do you see how it works? And this comes back to positioning and authority and celebrity status. Because then, now when there's, you know, when there's you know, a golf championship held, you are the golfing guy, and you can run adverts that send people looking for golfing stuff to see you. And that's about getting free PR and stuff and building up from ad, you know, publicity and something else that sends over to you. You can get free publicity um, when there's a championship on in the local thing, saying, you know, talking about this service you provide, and by the way, I'm the golfing eye surgeon, I've, I've written a book about that. Do you see how it builds up and joins together in funny ways and very profitable ways for you as well? And any of you could do this. And this again comes to authority we're talking about. So, any questions on any of that? I know it's late. Just one comment. If we do the avatar thing, it works incredibly well. But one of the other benefits is you get an inverse. You get to work out how, how little you, you know, the people you don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Almost come out of the wash, don't they? But, you know, they self select them. themselves yes. out. Yeah. We'll be talking about that. But as I say, but the lot, this stuff, as I say, all matters, like the avatar. You can't run a sensible advertising campaign really anywhere unless you could accurately describe who you're looking for. Yeah, I, 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 as I mentioned Facebook a lot purely because they, they stratify people in demographics. But the same would be true on pay per click advertising and AdWords. Yeah. If you don't know what people are searching for, then you can't find them. They are not going to be ser searching for the plant or defibrillators. They're going to be searching for shortness of breath, palpitations, yeah. feel like I'm dying, can't breathe at night. Yeah. They're not going to be searching for um, prostatism, you know, LUTs. They're not going to be searching. They're going to be searching for getting up, peeing in the night. No, you're going to be searching for nocturia or hematuria. It's interesting to see what your keywords. I'm just looking at an ad thing right. now, and it's the basic stuff that they, they you know, things like the technical words are not not there. Of course not, really. It's all it's just knee injury is what you know, the top thing that people search for, ligament injury or right. ACL or anything like that. Right. And you're not interested in the diagnosis. Not really. You're interested in getting them in through the door. Then you make the diagnosis, and it's just the same as the GP yeah. referral. Is there guidance on where we can uh, get access to those keywords? Oh. Why do we? They're in your head. <coughs> You've got to try them. You think of the language that people use to you yeah. when they're consulting with you. Now, we, one of the things we're all really very, very, very good at is pattern recognition. Is what, sir? Pattern recognition. Mm -hmm. So pattern somebody talks to you about X, Y, Z, blah, 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 getting up in the night, and he's a 50-year-old you know, bloke, 60-year-old bloke, getting up in the night, can't, you know, symptoms and signs of incomplete bladder emptying and so on. You, know, you get a few key phrases, you're immediately thinking, right, this sounds like, et cetera, and so it goes. This is what we all do. Yeah, we've all got that shorthand in our heads about our own clinical practice. And it guides us to make a differential diagnosis very quickly. We all know this. Now, from the language that patients, and we know the languages that patients use to us. So think of the phrases they say to you, and that's what they'll be searching for. Note those phrases down. <coughs> and so that allows you to get your adverts targeted at saying paper click advertising. But also in your copy, when you write stuff about, um, when you write stuff about um, cataracts, for example, yeah, you talk, or you should be talking about difficulty driving at night, halos, possibly washed out colours, glare, yeah. um, difficulty distinguishing faces, all sorts of things like that, because that's what patients complain of, with cataracts. So use that language back at them. And then they think, this guy knows what I'm talking about. He's clearly, you know, he's, he's my cataract surgeon because he knows, he knows what the problem is, yeah? So knowing those, having an intimate knowledge of your patients in this way is critical. 
and it will be, it'll, and we will mention um, later about outsourcing your marketing to other people and why that's so dangerous. Because whilst they might know the technical stuff about Google AdWords and whatever, which is really important, um, they also need to know these kinds of keywords and they won't know them. So you need to have an intelligent discussion with them about, well, look, this is the kind of things that I want you to target. Right? And it, only you, or somebody else medically qualified, uh, will be able to do that. So this, this kind of knowledge comes in at so many levels. So that's, I think that's enough about advertising and it is, but it's, uh, it is really important to know, and it's, not, it's, tight, it's again part of your you know, critical stuff you've got to have done, because that information will feed into your website and elsewhere and everywhere. You will use it over and over and over again. And the more accurately you can define your ideal patient, the better. So that's it for the moment, gentlemen. Any questions? It's been a long day. You're all tired. I know. What time's dinner? Seven o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do talk to her about you know, one couple of accepts and, and, and the other one. Yeah. So, the temptation would be to keep it with her. She can do other stuff. You know, and you can get you know, a load of sense. You can get somebody else to check out somebody else to do. But in any case, just divorce those things. Get some tracking in. Get this, get that. I'll find somebody who knows what they're talking about. This way, if you're around, I'm really glad. Don't put it off. Really busy. Oh, yeah, that's a few pieces. And he's still around. This is great. I don't know. It's difficult to know, yeah. I don't know what the function ratio is, but it's good enough. Well, as I was talking about, when you use it in the hospital click, it's kind of irrelevant. And it's quite for instance, the most important metric is paper clay, which I'll talk about. That was funny, because I was in there. So how much you pay to get someone to trust I was talking to a psychiatrist. But then the subsequent, more important metric is how much does it cost. To get another leads, which results to the patient. Because I didn't care less how many leads you get, I didn't care how many patients you get. Leads means someone inquired. I did M&R for an hour. And the way you said you're going to do this, here's an opportunity to do this. Well, I mean, this will get you the results. Hang around like that. Yeah. Which is kind of essential for pay per click as well. If you don't have conversion tracking, you are going to be throwing money away. Six months from years time. So it's, uh, again, I'll cover it properly tomorrow. But conversion tracking so basically it tells you which keyword converted. Yeah, think how much you could be. 
So, yeah, we couldn't do our job without Google Yeah, we, we manage um, Google AdWords. And one of the things that we do is we produce a monthly report well of details well the leads. Yeah. And what we then get from you guys is, is feedback to know, uh, you know who they converted to, how much they've been worth, and then we produce on the Y based on you know, this is how much you spent on Google AdWords, this is our bid, this is how much you've earned, this is how much ROI you've got, and then what we can do for, what we do for several clients is they give us a profit margin. Guys, so, guys, need to watch this now. Because a lot of the shit we've started talking about on this website is made to change. Now, it's two weeks. Exactly. The point is, look, we've made a change without faffing around, it's not an um, ideal, it's not perfect, but it's, a huge, but it's head it's and shoulders it's above what it was before. <laughs> yeah? Catch up with your people. Even if I wanted to come, I'd have to come and make you